Los Angeles in the 1980s and 90s was an epic epicenter of violence and drugs. The worst impacted part of the city was South LA, where a spate of murders of mostly young black women went unsolved for decades. And then, nearly four years ago, a man by the name of Lonnie Franklin Jr. was arrested in connection to the murders of a number of women who were shot with a 25 millimeter gun. Franklin was picked up after DNA from one of his relatives linked him to saliva on the bodies of victims. The women aged 14 to 36 were only a small number of women who were still missing, some of them sex workers. The story of the murders, the man who have may, may have been behind them, and the city where it all happened forms the basis of a new documentary called Tales of the Grim Sleeper by Nick Broomfield. Named by journalists following the story, the Grim Sleeper was so named because it was thought that the killer took a break of 13 to 14 years from killing before starting up again in 2002. Tales of the Grim Sleeper has been picked up by HBO Documentaries. It's been shortlisted for the Academy Awards Best Documentary nominations, and it opens on the big screen for a one-week run at the Lemley Playhouse in Pasadena, Southern California, through next Wednesday. Eventually, will air on HBO. Joining me in studio today is Nick Broomfield, award-winning filmmaker. His earlier films include Eileen, Life and Death of a Serial Killer, and Sarah Palin, You Betcha, and Margaret Prescott, founder of the Black Coalition Fighting Back Serial Murders. She's also a familiar voice to our KPF. Okay, listeners, she's the host of Sojourner Truth, airing at 7 a.m. Uh, welcome to Uprising, Margaret and Nick. Hi. Good to be here, Sivali. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, I have to say the movie was um, incredibly amazing, incredibly disturbing. I had a hard time sleeping last night after I watched it. Um, and the most incredible part about it was that people outside of L.A., and even probably most people in L.A., haven't known that this is a story that took place right here. Um, first, uh, I'd like to start, Margaret, with you, since you've been involved in the story for many, many years. And we know that um, many women were have gone missing, but this person who's now been arrested four years ago has only been arrested in connection with the murders of a handful of women. How serious is, has this issue been? It's been very serious because I think anyone watching this program, listening to this program, would know and recognize very well that if it was one young white West Virginia student that goes missing, it's on the news every day, the whole world knows about it. But to have scores of black women in South LA to be killed, to be victims of a serial killer, and a lot of people in South LA don't even know about it, much less the broader Southern California area, much less the nation or the world. It's the kind of devaluation of uh, the lives of black women that we connect very much with the mass movement that's happening now on the street about Black Lives Matter. When I founded the Black Coalition in the mid-1980s, our theme was every life is of value, black women's lives count, right. black women's lives so matter, and there you go. Similar, right, almost exactly the same theme. Yes. Uh, Nick, why did this story interest you, and, and how did you determine how to go about approaching it? Because you essentially um, interviewed the uh, friends uh, of the person that people now believe is the Grim Sleeper, mm. Lonnie Franklin. Well, Jr. I've lived in Los Angeles a long time. When I first came here in the 70s, uh, the, the city actually was, m there was a lot more contact with South Central Los Angeles than today. Uh, there were much more federal funded programs. There, in fact, my mother-in-law had a medical center there. Uh, and there was a lot more toing and froing. I think the federal funding all got cut off, then the crack went in, and I think what we have now is two cities. We have the sort of white, wealthy city, and you have South Central, and there's no communication between the two cities. So when I came across this case, and there were you know, inklings of maybe 200 women disappearing, which is a kind of mini genocide happening in mm -hmm. the center of Los Angeles, uh, I thought, how is this possible? So I went in with a very simple question, which was, how is it possible that this number of people could disappear inside the city? And of course, you know, and the film really is that investigation and that story. And you realize that the two cities have completely different value systems and completely different life expectations. 
And that's really, I think, the most devastating thing about the film because it's only 15 miles from where I live in Santa Monica that this is happening. And I think people in this city are so unaware of what is happening. And, you know, Margaret, for 25 years, has been pioneering this, trying to get an investigation. Even today, despite the fact that there are this number of people missing, that it took 25 years for the police to catch uh, Lonnie Franklin, uh, there's still been no internal investigation. It, I mean, there should really be some kind of massive inquiry as to how right. this is possible to have happened. It's such a disgrace.